Bolimab and ipilimumab compared to adjuvant nevo in melanoma. And we have uh, Dr. Christian Blank. Um, Dr. Blank is from the Netherlands Cancer Institute in Amsterdam, and he will be presenting these findings. Okay. Thank you very much for coming so early. Um, my name is Christian Blank. I am hematologist, oncologist at the Netherlands Cancer Institute, and on behalf of the co-authors that you see here, I will present the investigator-initiated NADINA trial comparing neoadjuvant nevo plus EP versus adjuvant nivolumab in macroscopic resectable state 3 melanoma. Uh, when we treat these patients with surgery only, the outcome of these patients is very impaired. It's five-year relapse-free survival is only 30% and the overall survival is only 50%. Adjuvant therapy improves relapse-free survival, but not overall survival, as we have seen yesterday, also for the targeted therapies in long term, that there was no statistically significant OS benefit. Thus, there is an urgent need for these patients for novel therapy approaches. Based on several trials upfront, we have designed the NADINA trial, a phase three trial that includes stage three, the novo or recurrent pathological proven resectable melanoma with at least one lymph node metastasis. In this trial, additional and transit metastasis were allowed. The patients had to be naive for anti-PD-1, anti-CTL-4, uh, anti-LEC-3 or BRAF mac inhibition and were stratified for BRAF continent and in transit metastasis. This was an international trial. And then we randomized the patients to the experimental arm, arm A, to two courses of EP 80 milligram flat dose, 240 milligram NEVO flat dose, three weeks, and then underwent therapeutic lymph node dissection. And special for this trial, there was a personalized adjuvant parts. So if the patients achieved a major pathologic response, which means less than 10% vital tumor cells in the resection specimen after the neoadjuvant therapy, no adjuvant treatment was given and the patient started right away the follow-up. So the patient had only six weeks of treatment. And only if you didn't achieve this major pathologic response, the patients received also an adjuvant therapy for BROF wild type, we continued with nivolumab. For BROF mutated patients, we did the class switch to dabrafenib tramadinib. And all this was compared to the standard of care at, at, at that time, therapeutic lymph node dissection, followed by adjuvant nivolumab. The key endpoint or the primary endpoint was event-free survival. And I show you here now the analysis from the first interim analysis, which was at once also the, pri the, the final analysis, because it was highly statistically significant positive with a p-value of 0 0.0001 and a hazard ratio of 0.32 showing that the neoadjuvant treatment had an estimated event-free survival of 83.7% against the standard of care active treatment with adjuvant nivolumab of 57.2%. When we look into the subgroups, for example, BROF mutation status or BROF wild type status on the left side, you see for both groups also a highly statistically significant outcome favoring the neoadjuvant therapy with hazard ratios of 0.29 and 0.35. In the middle, I provide to you all subgroup analysis that we have done, and you see for all subgroups also the neoadjuvant therapy favors. On the right side, you see the pathologic response. We were already able to centrally revise all the local assessments. In contrast to the SWOC 1801 trial, we could analyze all patients and you see no hardly any discrepancies between the local assessment and the central review with a major pathologic response, which is shown in green, 
of 59%. Why is the major pathologic response so important? This is important because the, the patients that achieve a major pathologic response have an excellent outcome with an AFS of 95%. And this is then whether you achieve a complete response or whether you have still 10% of vital tumor in your, uh, in your specimen. If you have only a partial response, then you have an event free survival of 76%. If you have a non-response, you have an event free survival of 57%. And this is still the same like for the adjuvant trial where we had uh, adjuvant arm where we had 57%. Of note also, and this is unfortunately missing because this is the old version from the slides, the quality of life was equally for the neoadjuvant arm as for the adjuvant arm, despite of we had 30 versus 15% grade three or four toxicities in these patients. The major toxicity or quality of life impairment for the patients comes from the surgery and not from the immunotherapy. And we have also a late breaking poster abstract uh, today at the melanoma poster session where we show this early quality of life data. So in conclusion, Nadina is the first neo adjuvant checkpoint inhibitor phase three trial in melanoma. It's an investigator initiated trial. It is also the first phase three trial in oncology overall, testing a pure neoadjuvant checkpoint inhibitor a combination without chemotherapy. At the moment, we see only additions of uh, immunotherapy to the chemotherapy neoadjuvant arms. But here you see that we can also treat patients with pure immunotherapy arms. The neoadjuvant combination I've showed you is a highly statistical significant EFS benefit as compared to the adjuvant PD-1 blockade with a hazard ratio of 0.32, which is very special, I think, because we have not a placebo control but an active comparator. Nearly 60% of the patients in the neoadjuvant needed only six weeks of treatment. And I think this is very interesting in in times of scarce resources, not only financially, but also healthcare professionals, if we have treatments for our patients that are, in my view, highly potential curative, but don't use so much of the resources of our healthcare system. And together with the SWOC 1801, I think Nadina defines now in melanoma that neoadjuvant immunotherapy is the new standard of care in macroscopic stage three melanoma, which means that all trials currently ongoing need to be amended from adjuvant comparators to neoadjuvant comparator. And it is a new template for other malignancies, implementing a neoadjuvant immunotherapy regimen followed by response-driven adjuvant therapies. I think we see at the moment only sandwich designs, and this is more sales-driven than patient-driven, because what you have seen, if a patient achieves a really deep response, the patient doesn't need an adjuvant part for that. With that, I want to close, and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Blank. Now, ASCO expert, Dr. Michael Lowe from the Emory University School of Medicine in Atlanta, Georgia, will share a few additional comments about the significance of this research. Thank you, and congratulations to Dr. Blank, the Nadina study team, and their patients for executing this exciting trial. The study confirms and shows for the first time in a phase three study that giving immunotherapy before surgery results in superior outcomes to giving immunotherapy only after surgery. The study also confirms that giving two immunotherapy drugs before surgery results in excellent responses. I will offer a note of caution that all patients got two immunotherapies, so we cannot make comparisons to trials in which patients only got one immunotherapy. But this study confirms with consistency that patients that receive ipilimumab and nivolumab have superior responses compared to single agent immunotherapy. Also, all patients had all of their lymph nodes removed, so this should re remain the standard of care in terms of surgical approach. Lastly, for patients with pathologic major responses, therapy given after surgery was omitted, 
with short follow-up, it is too early to tell if some patients may have benefited from that adjuvant therapy. However, Nadina confirms that immunotherapy should be given to all patients with advanced melanoma removed before surgery when possible and establishes dual therapy with nivolumab and ipilimumab as the standard of care in the appropriate patient. Congratulations again to the Nadina study team for continuing to push the boundaries on the use of systemic therapies in patients with melanoma who are able to undergo curative intent surgery.